My name's Vernon Fisher, and uh, this is my show. I use whatever's at hand to tell you the truth. There's a lot of painting in the work I do, but there's a lot of other stuff as well. You know, there's uh, photography, cartoons, diagrams, cutouts. Uh, so a lot of times there's been sculptural elements and stuff, you know. But the point is to get a lot of balls in the air at once and then try to sort it out. Work here is from 1977 to the present. So it's, you know, it's quite a span sometimes between works, but I think the thing that they all do is they, they ask to be interpreted, they ask to be put together. And the things that you're putting together aren't from the same category, in other words, it's not like they're all abstract marks you're going to put together to understand an abstract painting. What you're going to see is like a text, which is one thing, and then a representational image, and then a sculptural element, and so forth, cartoon thing. If you boil that down, you're going to end up with something that's physical, that's obdurant, that's present, that you can bump into. Uh, something that's almost documentary, representational, like when photographs come in or photorealist painting. And then the depiction's a particular kind of representation in that it points back at the maker. In other words, a photograph, except for the things you choose, often doesn't do that. But when you uh, draw a cartoon, you know, everybody has a different cartoon style. So that's, that's what I do, you know. Along the way, the, the tone changes, you know, and when I think about tone, what I'm talking about is the attitude of the artist toward the material. Sometimes it's satirical, sometimes you're really serious, sometimes it's comic, and in a lot of my best pieces, I think I have all those kinds of things going on at the same time. So it makes it kind of hard to sort out, but I think that's an honest way to deal with reality, you know, when everything kind of adds up, I feel that it's sort of official. When most people see a piece that has a text, they take the text as the most authoritative part of the piece. Somehow we give that more weight than anything else. Typically a person reads the text. In this case, it's a text that's sanded through a photograph. Down near the end of the text, which is a very serious text in the sense that what's happening is a representation of a person in trouble. He's bleeding and blood is running down his arm and off the tips of his fingers and it's spattering on the rocks beneath his feet. With that in mind, if you think about the spatters, then you've got the cartoon element with Nancy. You see there's been a, a free sample of soap, actually, that's been thrown through the window and hits the fudge and spatters on that Fritzy. And so that's a kind of comic spatter. Then you have the serious spatter that's mentioned in the text. And then you have these birds. That's the source of the title of the piece, 84 Sparrows. They're, they're not all sparrows, but the point is they're thrown against the wall in such a way as it's reminiscent of the spatter that's talked about in the text. In this case, these are little abstractions and they're cut in the shape of birds. So, you, you know, when you see the piece, everything's quite different from one another, but this held together as much by a, a narrative thread as anything. After I made the piece and was looking for a title, the, eight, the word 84 came because there were 84 birds and sparrows came because unconsciously I remembered this Bible verse I must have learned as a kid or heard in church or something, you know. It's somewhere in Matthew and Jesus is speaking about uh, sparrows are of little worth, yet not one will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And then he goes on to say, even the hairs on your head are numbered, so don't be afraid, you are worth more than many sparrows. So there's this tragic event going on, but the title 84 Sparrows actually casts an aura of hope over the whole thing. Because we really don't know the outcome of, of this guy that's bleeding. When I was writing all the time, I would write stories independent of any images. And typically the stories did come first. And then when I would get a story to the point where I thought it was interesting and resolved, I would sort through and try to find images. You pick one and you work it together with the text and then other things come to mind. Starting out, it was simple. It was always a photographic image that I painted with the text sanded through. And I was infatuated with the idea that you really can't read the text and see the painting. Because when you're reading, you see the imagery that's talked about in the text. 
And once I realized that, then I would write texts that were quite vivid, where you would have visual things to look at, you know, or, or to sense, you know, like uh, how water feels, or how it's cold, or how it's wet, or how it's whatever's happening, you know. It's, it's funny what it does to scale. I used to try to make things big because I wanted to be powerful. But I once wrote this text about a guy who's floating down the Ganges. As he floats down, he looks up and sees stars swilling overhead and fish are nibbling at the tips of his fingers. And I realized, man, that's scale. I mean, it's cosmic, you know? But that's always been fascinating that you literally read the text not seeing any of what's behind it. Then you have to step back and see the image. This is called Aardvark Charter History. And what it is, is the uh, first entry in the Encyclopedia World Book that I had as, as a kid. So it's its first entry, of course, because it's a double A. And I took the text and stenciled it on this painting. But the rule that I used was, once a word was used, it was used up and couldn't appear again. So that's the whole text, but there are many articles and conjunctions missing. And this is a strategy I use a lot where the text and whatever seems to be the interpretive elements are really the armature, but it gives me an excuse to do all these things with paint and the physicality of the painting and all that business, which is really where the feeling is, you know? So at one level, they operate like any abstract painting. It's just they're abstract paintings made with the elements of a novelist.